Okay, now we've done the work of taking the measurements that we need, and now it's time to do the mathematics. If you remember, on the uh, spherometer base, we measured the distance from the outside to the outside of each pair of balls. The ball feet, uh, you need to know the distance between the ball feet. And so the calculation that we make with that is pretty simple. The first thing I did, I wrote down my three measurements of the distance to the outside of the ball feet. It was 5.070 inches, 5.050, and 5.041. My little balls on the end of the ball feet are a quarter of an inch. So all I have to do is subtract a quarter of an inch from each of these readings, and that gives me the distance between the centers of each of the balls. Now the next thing I have to do, I need to calculate this little constant, uh, k, that we'll use in further equations to define our spherometer. The equation is k equals one-half of the quantity a plus b plus c. And a, b, and c are just these three distances. So the equation becomes k equals one-half of 4.82 plus 4.800 plus 4.791 from up here. Add those three together, you get 14.411. Take half of that, and k ends up equal to 7.2055. Now we need to find the radius of our spherometer. And again, the radius would be the distance from the point of the spherometer out to the circle that is circumscribed around this triangle. Now the equation, the radius equals a times b times c. a, b, and c are just those three distances, center to center on the three legs of the uh, triangle there. So r equals a times b times c divided by four times the square root of this whole quantity. And that's k times k minus a times k minus b times k minus c. So we've already got k in the previous math, 7.2055. k minus a would be that same constant, minus 4.8200, which was the side of the first leg. That's 2.3855. The second leg here is 7.2055 minus 4.8 which is 2.4055. And the third chunk here, 7.2055 minus 4.7910, which is 2.4150. <clears throat> A times B times C is just these three numbers, 4.82 times 4.80 times 4.791. Multiply those together, you end up with 110.8446. So now we've got all the chunks of this equation, and we can put it all together here. The radius equals 110.8446 divided by the quantity 4 times the square root of k times k minus a times k minus b times k minus c. That one's from there to here and to here. And if you grab the calculator and work out all that math, we find that the radius of my spherometer are equals 2.7734 inches. I want to show you how to use the spherometer to actually measure the sagitta of a mirror and then be able to calculate the radius after you take that measurement. What you need first of all is a reference piece. In order to measure the sagitta, you need to be able to zero out the spherometer to what's flat. This is a reference piece. This is an optical, an old optical flat. This is a piece of glass. This one's about uh, an inch and a quarter thick. And the top of this piece of glass is flat. So I use this piece of flat glass to zero out my spherometer. And basically, you just put the spherometer on top of this piece of flat glass. Now, there are different things you could use for a reference flat. Uh, you could even go down and just get a thick piece of plate glass, uh, half an inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick, whatever you might have. That would certainly be flat enough to use for reference. And what you might consider investing in is an item called a surface plate. A surface plate is actually made to be a reference flat. They're normally made out of granite, and they actually make nice little ones. Uh, for example, uh, a company called Grizzly makes surface plates. You can get a two inch thick granite surface plate, six inches wide, eight inches long for $13. Uh, that might be a little small for some applications. You can get one that's nine inches by 12 inches on the surface for $20. So you, and, and those would be accurate to at least a thousandth of an inch. Uh, but in any case, you put your spherometer on your flat surface, and then the front of the spherometer shows the measurement. 
Now since this is a reference flat, the measurement we're taking now is the zero measurement. This, is, this shows flat. So on the face of my uh, dial indicator here, I find where it has the zero mark. And I'm just going to twist that around to go over the needle. So now when I transfer this spherometer onto my actual mirror to make the measurement, the spherometer will directly read the depth of that mirror given the uh, diameter of the footprint of this particular spherometer. So I've got that set to zero. Now I'll take that off of my reference flat and I'll get rid of the reference flat here and we'll replace that reference flat with an actual mirror. Now this is a mirror that I, uh, a mirror blank actually that I just purchased and it was pre-generated so at the place where uh, they make mirror blanks they generated a curve on this for me and it's supposed to be a 10 inch f6 mirror so I'd expect f6 times 10 would be 60 inches for the focal length that would be 120 inches for the radius so I'm hoping that the radius of this new piece of glass is something around 120 inches. So now I just take my spherometer, which uh, still has the zero reference on it for me, and I put it right on the mirror. And now I can go and look at the face of the spherometer, and uh, I'll actually zoom in here a little bit. Hopefully we can see what it says. Now in this particular mirror, if I take the reading down here, it's 10, 20, 31 thou. Now 31 thou is the closest one to the needle. And actually the needle is just slightly past 31 thou. If you wanted to interpolate, interpolate excuse me, this would be about 31 and a half thou, or 0.0315. But it's just as easy as that. You, put, you zero this on a flat, mark the zero point, put the spherometer on the mirror, read the amount that the probe has dropped down into the mirror, in this case 31 thou or 31 and a half thou, and then it's just a matter of doing a little bit of mathematics, and we'll do that next. And finally we're down to the spherometer equation itself. This lets you know the radius of the mirror equals the radius of the spherometer squared minus the sagittal measurement squared divided by 2 times the sagittal measurement, that quantity minus d over 2, and d is the diameter of the ball feet on your spherometer. And on our spherometer their di diameter is 0.25 inch, a quarter of an inch, so it's d divided by 2. So in the case of the mirror that we just measured, our sagitta was 0.031 inches. So the radius of the mirror is 2.7734, that being the radius of our spherometer itself, squared minus 0.031 squared, divided by 2 times 0.031, again 2 times the sagitta, quantity minus 0.25 over 2. That reduces a little bit. Radius of the mirror is 7.6917. That's the radius squared. Minus 0 0.0010. That's the sagitta squared. Over 0 0.062. That's 2 times the sagitta. Minus 0.125. Half of that. So if you work the math on that little guy, the radius of the mirror is 123.9 inches. Divide that in half to get the focal length, so the focal length would be 61.95 inches. Now if you remember when we were looking at the sagitta measurement we were making, we determined that 0.031 was the closest whole uh, number on our dial indicator. But actually we thought that the number might be closer to 0.0315. It was halfway between 31 and 32. Now I'll save you the math here. Uh, if you go through all this with this sagitta, uh, 31.5 up in the sagitta, then the radius comes out instead to 121.95 inches. So uh, it's about 2 inches difference between this and this. So a spherometer like this will give you accuracy to at least uh, 2 inches and maybe an inch if you read it carefully. And for an inexpensive instrument, that's pretty good.